Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here and I'm going over 1.06 empirical formula. The empirical formula is making the simplest chemical formulas when given the elements it contains and their masses. Example, Fe5Cl4. The way I like to think of it is you cannot reduce the subscripts. If you cannot reduce the subscripts, you have an empirical formula. You can also have a molecular formula, which is a compound's actual formula, and the subscripts can be reduced. So for example, Fe10Cl8, I can reduce these subscripts by dividing them both by 2 to get the empirical formula of Fe5Cl4. And you see this a lot in organic compounds, meaning compounds that contain carbon. Now, the empirical formula and the molecular formula can be the same thing. For example, think of water. What is water's formula? H2O. Can we reduce it? No. So H2O has the same empirical and molecular formula. But what we're going to be talking about today is finding empirical formulas. And if I give you a molecular formula, can you reduce it to the empirical formula? So tell me if these are empirical or molecular formulas, H2O. So we cannot reduce it, as I just said. So that one would be empirical. Because remember, the subscript right there is really a 1, right? We just don't need to write it. So I can't reduce, so it's empirical. What about this one? Can I reduce it? Yes. So is it empirical or molecular? It would be molecular. And if I reduced it, what would it be? I can divide both these numbers by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And now it would be the empirical formula. What about that one? Gold sulfate. Can I reduce it? Yes. So is it empirical or molecular? Molecular. What can I divide the subscripts by? 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Notice how I did not touch the polyatomic ion because the polyatomic ion is a pre-made family and we are not homewreckers in chemistry class. We do not break up families. All right, what about this one? Is this one molecular or empirical? It's also molecular. Reduce it for me. Well, I have 3 and 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And what about this one? This one's empirical because I cannot reduce. Because I'd have to reduce the 3 and the 4, and I can't do that. Leave alone what's in the parentheses. All right, so that's the first part of this lesson. So the empirical formula of a substance is CH2. Now I know that the molar mass is 180. So in a way we're working backwards. Here I gave you a bunch of empiricals and I made you change them into molecular formulas. Okay. Here I said, okay, here's the empirical formula. We're going to have to multiply. Instead of reducing, we're going to have to multiply by a factor of something in order to get the molar mass of 180. So what do we know? Well, we know the molar mass is 180. And what about the empirical mass? So I want the mass of this compound. How much is each carbon? 12.01. How much is each hydrogen? 1.01. If you don't know these numbers, look on the periodic table. How many hydrogen atoms do we have? Two. How much is the molar mass of oxygen? 16.00. Add it all up. And we get our empirical mass, which is 32.02 grams per mole. Any ideas of what to do now? So I know how much this weighs. And I have some formula that I'm trying to find. What I'm trying to find is C question mark, H question mark, O question mark. Well, we want to look at how many times bigger the empirical is or sorry, how many times bigger the molar is compared to the empirical? How many times bigger? So we're going to divide. We're going to take 180 divided by 30 and get 6. Okay, what does that mean? That 6 means that my molar mass is 6 times 
bigger than my empirical. So that means my molecular formula is how many times bigger than this one? It's six times bigger. So specifically, we know that it's six times bigger, so we need to multiply this whole thing by six. And what do you think the answer would be? It is, so CH2O becomes C6H12O6, or glucose. Dun, dun, dun. So this is a great example of how in real life we use the molecular formula, but if we reduced it, it would be an empirical formula, which is actually something completely different than the glucose your body uses. So again, what I did is I took it times six. So there was one carbon, now there's six. There were two hydrogens, now there's 12. There was one car oxygen, now there's six. And so this would be your final answer. So I'm just gonna super quick buzz through this one again, because I think now that we saw the answer, it might make a little more sense. So I started out with giving you the empirical formula, and I told you how much the molecular formula weighs, or the final product weighs. Then we said, okay, let's find how much the empirical formula weighs. So this is how much CH2O weighs, and we want to find out what compound we really have, and we know that it weighs this much. So then we compare our two numbers and say, oh, yep, we know that 180 divided by 30 is about 6, so it's 6 times bigger. Now, if you notice, I kind of dropped some of the decimal places for this section, and the reason is because you're multiplying it by a factor of something and you have to have whole numbers so we have to roll round to whole numbers whenever we do subscripts all right so that means that the final answer is six times bigger than what i gave you and so it becomes c6h12o6 all right empirical formula so let's do another one, um, another type of problem, and here we go. Empirical formula. So you will be given the mass or the moles of different elements. Then you will need to find the ratio of these elements and how they combine to make the compound. So in other words, you're finding what the subscripts would be for the chemical formula. So this time we're starting with grams or moles, and you need to find the subscripts. So I'm giving you 5.92 grams of hydrogen and 94.07 grams of oxygen. What is the empirical formula? Okay, so when I'm asking you for the empirical formula, examples would be maybe it's H2O. Maybe it's just HO. Maybe it's H2O7. Okay, this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the formula based on the fact that I told you how many grams of each element you have. So we need to find how many moles. Moles are magic in chemistry. Anytime you get stuck, convert to moles. That's like your magic right there, magic moles. So we need to find how many moles of each element we have, then the ratio of the moles. So where do we start? Start with what you know. I gave you 5.92 grams of hydrogen, and I gave you 94.07 grams of oxygen. What has to go on the bottom of this fraction? What unit? It's got to be grams of hydrogen, right? We got to put grams of hydrogen on the bottom down here so that they cancel. Okay, what about down here? What would my unit be right down here? Grams of oxygen so that it cancels. So I have two separate equations going on at once. I'm finding out the moles of hydrogen and the moles of oxygen. All right, and so I just told you what I'm finding. What am I finding? Moles of hydrogen. What am I finding? Moles of oxygen. So this, again, is what you should have set up to start with. Then you can fill in your blanks and look on the periodic table to find out how many grams is one mole of hydrogen. How many grams is the same as one mole of oxygen? I knew to put one mole up here because that's what I want for my final answer. So these two are going to cancel out 
and I'm going to be left with this unit. Down in this equation, grams of oxygen are going to cancel out, and I want to be left with moles of oxygen. All right, so each mole of hydrogen weighs 1.01 gram. Each mole of oxygen weighs 16.00 grams. Put it in your handy-dandy calculator, and you get 5.9 moles of each. So, okay, if I have exactly the same amount of each, what do you think the subscripts would be? Our ratio is 5.9 to 5.9, or if I reduce, 1 to 1. So what would our formula be? It would just be OH or HO. So it's either Santa's favorite thing, ho, 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 green giant, or the green giant's favorite thing. <laughs> In chemistry, they write the O before the H. I am not going to test you on which element comes first for these. These are all kinds of funny rules. Okay. Now, that being said, if you think back to first semester when we had like NaCl, yeah, you had to know the Na was first and the Cl was second because the Na is positive, the Cl is negative, but that's for an ionic compound, which is a metal plus a nonmetal. When you start writing two nonmetals together, it gets weird. So if you wrote HO, that would be correct for this one, or OH. All right, let's do one that's slightly different. So for this problem, I gave you 5.92 grams of hydrogen. Now I have 11.91 grams of hydrogen. So I set it all up for you because it's the same setup. Okay, except now we're going to have different amounts of each. We're going to have different moles. So we have 11.8 moles and 5.9 moles. Now, most are like this. So you need to do another step. Not very many of them are easy like this where they give you the same answer and you're like, oh, woohoo, one to one. <laughs> no, they're not all that easy. So what we have to do is divide each mole by the smaller of the two. All right, so these are our two answers. Our two answers are 11.8 moles and 5.9 moles. Which one's smaller? 5.9. So I'm going to take that 11.8, divide it by 5.9, I get 2. I take the 5.9, divide it by 5.9, and I get 1. So here's my hydrogen, I get an answer of 2. Here's my oxygen, I get an answer of 1. What's my empirical formula? H2O. So what we did, just to kind of back up again, I gave you masses, okay, you converted them to moles. We divided by the smaller amount to get whole numbers, ratios, and these whole number ratios are the ratios of how many atoms of hydrogen you need for how many atoms of oxygen. All right, next one. We have what is the empirical formula if? We have 9.62 grams of hydrogen, 51.6 grams of oxygen, and 38.7 grams of carbon. So find your magic moles. So hit pause and at least do this part on your own. Okay, hopefully you convert from grams to moles of hydrogen. Convert from grams to moles of oxygen. Convert from grams to moles of carbon. And then we'll check your answers. We know grams goes on the bottom of all of these so that our grams cancel. We know we're solving for moles. We looked at the periodic table to figure out how much a gram of each of these elements is equivalent to one mole. And those are our final answers. Okay, so we want to look at this ratio, but these are weird numbers. So do you remember the next step? Divide all the answers by the smallest amount. So we're going to divide all of these by what? So I rewrote them. We're going to divide them all by 3.22. And you get your answers. Now use your answers as subscripts. What do you get for a final answer? You should get CH3O. And if you put them in a different order, I don't care. If you wrote H3OC, I don't care. As long as you have one carbon, three hydrogens, one oxygen. That is all I care about. Note, the empirical formula is sometimes reduced version of the molecular formula. So we are going to do an example of working backwards, but I'm going to have to pick that one up in the next video because my time's about to run out.